Greetings, this is M squared. We're going to solve some more linear systems using elimination. These are a little more challenging. Remember, our first step is to make sure the x's, the y's, and the numbers, and the equal signs are all lined up. And when, remember, when we're solving linear systems, we're finding where these two lines intersect. And sometimes lines don't intersect. Sometimes they intersect once. Sometimes they're parallel, don't intersect at all. And sometimes they're the same line, and they have an infinite amount of solutions. So keep that as, in mind as we go through these. Well, these are lined up, but I need coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables, to go bye-bye when I add these. So I need them to be the same. So it doesn't matter if I pick x or if I pick y to eliminate. I'm just going to choose x. So I'm going to say, sometimes one's easier than the other, but this time they're about the same. So I'm going to say, how would I get rid of this x? How would I get this to be negative 8? Because I want it to cancel out with that 8. Well, I'd have to multiply this whole equation by negative 2. So that's what I do. I'm going to rewrite the first one, 8x minus 4y equals 18. But I'm going to rewrite the second one after multiplying it by negative 2. So I'm going to get negative 8x plus 4y equals negative 16. So now you see that these are opposites. So when I add them, they're going to cancel out. 8x minus 8x is 0. But look what happens here, too. The negative 4y and the 4y also get me a 0. And I'm left with 0 equals 2. Now, does 0 equal 2? It does not. This is not a true statement. So sometimes when I get things to cancel out completely, I just double check to make sure I did it correct. And I know I did. And what that means is that these two lines are parallel. They have the same slope, which means they do not intersect. So I have no solution. So the answer to this one is no solution. If I had had all the variables canceled out and what was left was true, for example, I get 0 equals 0 or 7 equals 7, something like that, when I did elimination, then I would know that it was an infinite amount of solutions. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes variables cancel out, but there's two things that can happen. So remember which one is which. If it's true, this, it's um, the same line, and there's an infinite amount of solutions. If it's not true, then the lines are parallel. Moving on to this one. Which one do I want to eliminate? Well, since this one has a negative and this one has a positive, I'm just going to choose the y's. It really doesn't matter. I could multiply this one by a negative 2. Um, actually, that would be easier, because if I get, got rid of my y's, I'd have to multiply both equations. Let's do this one, because if I multiply this one, I just have to multiply by a negative 2. Okay, so let's multiply that whole equation by a negative 2, and I get negative 8x minus 12y equals negative 10. And over here, I get a negative 8x minus 9y equals 3. That one didn't change. So now, oh, I should have done it. Oh, this one was positive. Sorry. Okay, so now when I add these, these will cancel out. So those cancel, and I get negative 21y equals negative 7. When I divide both sides by negative 21, you remember 7 divided by 21 is not 3. The other way is 3, so it kind of, the negatives cancel out, and my answer is actually one third. A lot of people make that mistake. They say, oh, that's three because they don't like fractions. But this is actually one third. Seven divided by 21 is one third. So there's my y. I'm just going to put it right there. And sometimes you get fractions. You can double check and make sure you didn't make mistakes, but it's okay to get fractions. So now I'm going to take this y and put it into this first equation, substitute that in. So 4x plus 6 times one third equals 5. I should have made that the other color so you could see that it was actually substituted in. So now I have 4x plus, well, 1 third of 6 is 2, equals 5. If I minus 2 from both sides, I get a 3. And if I divide both sides by 4, I get x equals 3 fourths. Now some of you might be saying, oh, yuck, fractions. It's okay. We're going to handle it. If you want to check without using um, paper and pencil, you know, using a calculator, get a calculator that does fractions. But I'm going to check it into this one. 
right here. So I'm going to say, this is my check now. I found my solution. I think it intersected at one point. But to double check to make sure I get 100 on this assignment or this quiz, I'm going to check. So x was 3 fourths and y was 1 third. So I'm going to make sure that this equals 3. Well, when I multiply fractions and I don't use a calculator, remember this means divide. So I like to divide first if it's divisible. And 8 is divisible by 4. So 8 is divisible by 4 and it gets me 2. So then I get 2 times 3, which is 6. So 3 fourths of 8 is 6. 9 is divisible by 3, 3 times. And 3 times 1 is 3. So I get 6 minus 3 and that actually equals 3. And so did that. So that means I'm right. This is my answer. That was kind of a little challenging because of the fractions, but hopefully you follow that. And on the next one, the next lesson, we're going to do where we have to multiply both equations to eliminate one of the variables. So good luck with that. M squared, signing out.